Welcome back to 5 minute tutorials. Let's continue solving for the optimal solution of the problem with an integer restrictions using the branch and bound method. If you haven't watched the first video, click the video on top. The winner of our 50 pesos worth of load from the first video is our subscriber Irene Grace Ang. Congratulations! The optimal solution of the problem is x1 equals 3.706 and x2 equals 2.35 which will have a z value of 14.47 thank you for participating we ended our first lesson from here where we identify the optimal solution of the problem which is at point a x1 equals 5.142 and x2 equals 0 after plugging the value of x1 and x2 with our objective function we generate a z value of 15.43 but based on our third constraint that all decision variables must be a non-negative integer and our x1 is not an integer value but decimals. In order to come up with an integer solution, let us use the branch and bound method. But have you ever wondered why it is called the branch and bound method? It is because in this method we will be repeatedly divide and bound the new solution space until it fulfills an integer value. We can make several iterations until we have an integer solution. For the first iteration, branch the problem by selecting an integer value for x1. On the left, we have x1 less than or equal to 5. The boundary of the graph will be adjusted or moved inside. The new values of the variables are x1 equals 5 and x2 equals 0 0.2. And on the right, we have x1 greater than or equal to 6. Graphing x1 greater than or equal to 6, we found out that it does not satisfy our first constraints or it go beyond the red space. Therefore, at x1 greater than or equal to 6, the solution is infeasible. Because the solution at x1 less than or equal to 5 still does not satisfy the integer restriction, then let's move for the second iteration. For the second iteration, branch the problem by selecting an integer value for x2, for it is a decimal value compared to x1 which already an integer number. On the left, we have x2 less than or equal to 0 from 0 0.2. It moved downwards our boundary, which is still feasible. The new values of the variables are x1 equals 5 and x2 equals 0. And as you can see, it now satisfies the integer restriction. However, it doesn't mean that we will stop here, for we will try to compare other solutions with integer values along the next iterations, if applicable. And on the right, we have x2 greater than or equal to 1. Graphing x2 greater than or equal to 1, we find out that it has a non-integer solution, which are x1 equals to 4.429 and x2 equals 1. Because the solution at x2 less than or equal to 1 still does not satisfy the integer restriction, let's move on the third iteration. For the third iteration, branch the problem by selecting an integer value for x1. On the left, we have x1 less than or equal to 4. The new values of the variables are x1 equals 4 and x2 equals 1.6. And on the right, we have x1 greater than or equal to 5. Graphing x1 greater than or equal to 5, we found out that this does not satisfy our first constraint. Therefore, at x1 greater than or equal to 5, the solution is infeasible. But there's still a non-integer value at x2 equals 1.6. Let's continue to the fourth iteration. For the fourth iteration, branch the problem by selecting an integer value for x2. On the left, we have x2 less than or equal to 1. The new values of the variables are x1 equals 4 and x2 equals 1. And on the right, we have x2 greater than or equal to 2. The new values of the variables are x1 equals 3.714 and x2 equals 2. Again, at x1 equals 3.714 on the right is not an integer. Thus, let's continue to the fifth iteration. For the fifth iteration, branch the problem by selecting an integer value for x1. On the left, we have x1 less than or equal to 3. The new values of the variables are x1 equals 3 and x2 equals 2.56. And on the right, we have x1 greater than or equal to 4. Graphing x1 greater than or equal to 4, we found out that it does not satisfy our constraints, neither it intersects with our new solution space, which is in color red. Therefore, at x1 greater than or equal to 4, the solution is infeasible. For the sixth iteration, branch the problem by selecting an integer value for x2. On the left, we have x2 less than or equal to 2.
then it turns out that the solution variable is invisible. And on the right, we have x2 greater than or equal to 3. The new values of the variables are x1 equals 2 and x2 equals 3 because both left and right branch has no decimal value or already an integer value, then this will be the end of our iterations. The last step will be finding the integer decision variables that has greater value of z or result to optimal solution. We have x1 equals 5, x2 equals 0 with z equals 15. Next is x1 equals 4 and x2 equals 1 with z equals 14. Last is x1 equals 2 and x2 equals 3 with z equals 12. Therefore, the first point at x1 equals 5 and x2 equals 0 was the greater z value, which is 15, or this is our optimal integer solution. Therefore, the optimum solution of the problem is to produce 5 units of x1 and 0 units of x2 in order to maximize profit of 15. In the next video, let's try solving the same problem using the cutting plane method and compare it with the branch and bound method. Once again, this is 5 minute tutorials.